All right, Omaha, Omaha, make sure, yeah, there we go. We're at 1690 AM, the one. I got a special guest in the house. Uh, you know, normally my guests, they, they have their own theme music. Um, uh, the senator didn't bring no theme music. Um, so we're going to let him introduce himself. Everybody know uh, who the senator is. He's been um, one of the longest-running senators besides Senator Chambers, I think, um, up in the unit camera doing, doing stuff for our community. Um um, I lived in the Omaha Housing Authority as as a young boy in, a, in the Hilltop Projects, and um, he's always been in the community. Um, so I want to uh, let him introduce himself, and then we're gonna go go ahead and with this interview. So how you doing, sir? Who Good. are you? Well, thanks. You know, I was, that, it's interesting. You you, uh, you asked me about a soundtrack. I should have brought one. I love uh, I love that movie, Chariots of Fire. Uh-huh. Uh, that Olympic uh, movie about the runners, you right? Know, that uh, in 1921, and I, and uh, I like to jog. I'm a jogger, uh-huh. and so uh, in Lincoln, I've had uh, every noon I go out and and, uh, and jog, and uh, uh, I've always uh, enjoyed that. And and the, the the nice thing about about that is that the lobbyists down in Lincoln, you know, that try to influence your vote, mm-hmm. uh, they none of those guys have ever gone jogging with me. So I have I have relief from the joggers, but. Uh, <laughs> Or from the lobbyists, but anyway. So, um, well, thanks for asking. It's great to be here. I, I love this building. As I was saying, I, I've driven by here so many times, thinking, "What a neat building!" Right. And, and now it's really living. Uh, so, I um, I grew up in Omaha. Okay. I, I grew up in my family were we were in the clothing business. What kind of clothes? I mean, well, I, 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 everything. I mean, we we uh, my grandfather, great grandfather, uh, came from Sweden, and he uh, opened up. Uh, well, actually, he was a peddler. Uh-huh. And uh, and he would uh, he'd had a horse and buggy and he he went around uh, the Omaha area and into Iowa, uh, peddling uh, mainly clothes. Okay. Now, 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 did he have to give a permit like the city? Uh, no, <laughs> I don't think they had permits then. I, I think they just I think they just went out there and uh, and then uh, after that in, in the 1880s he he he, got, he bought into a building downtown uh-huh. and then finally. Uh, it, Almost at about the turn of the century, uh, he and, a, and two partners opened a store on 15th and Farnham. It's called Nebraska Clothing Company. Okay. It was there for forever in that location. It was a four-story building. Uh, it, it, you know where the downtown library is? That's where the store was. Oh, man. So I grew up uh, in the store, really. Okay. I mean, uh, you know, helping with the windows. Uh, that was one of my jobs, you know, because they would have the show windows on the uh-huh. street, and right. that was one of the great deals about downtown Omaha in those days. Is every store had great windows, and they would compete for the the best windows. So we would, especially during Christmas time. So, right. Uh, and there, so I and my grandfather then ran the store when I was a little kid, and then my dad and mother. But um, it was a fun place to to be. Right. Right. You know, I probably I remember back in the days when my mom, as a boy, we used to go downtown. Along 16th Street, all those mm-hmm. stores used to be open. Mm-hmm. You can go in there, and I remember I, I don't know all the name of those stores. I was oh, just a I, young boy. Well, you know there was mean? Brandeis, and then uh, was the big department store. There was Tully's, which was a store down on 15th Street. Uh-huh. There was uh, Herzberg's, Goldstein, Chapman's was a okay. women's store, and uh, and then what was a sad deal was 16th Street. You know, cut right through north to south. It was mm-hmm. uh, it was great. And uh, then the, the the hotel in the 60s was built at, on 16th and Dodge, and that sort of, it stopped the flow of right. people. And that was a bad deal, I think, from a planning perspective, but it is what it is. But, right. but um, you're right. I mean, as, a, as I would, I grew up in uh, Dundee area, mm-hmm. and uh, actually, I date myself, but as a, as a very young kid, we'd take the streetcar down. Oh, man. And then... <laughs> the bus, but and what our friends would do, like any other kid, and uh-huh. like eleven, twelve, thirteen, was we'd we'd take the bus and we we'd go to the uh, uh, to the, all the movie theaters, the Omaha Theater and the State Theater. Uh huh. It was great. Man, those are good times. There was, and everybody was there. Everybody in town was there on Saturday afternoon. I mean, you'd, you'd see everybody. Right now, you transition from from that to to. The unicamera. What what, right. what got you involved in politics anyway? Well, what year did you get involved in politics? Well, Bob Carey in nineteen. I was also a lawyer, and so in nineteen eighty two, Bob Carey was running for governor. Okay, and and I got to know Bob, and and he's still a great friend. I I he's one of my my 
true mentors in mm -hmm. government. He's just a, a great guy anyway. So in 1984, he appointed me as a judge on the state labor court. The Commission of Industrial Relations deals with public employee okay. labor. And so I got to do that. And then in 1986, uh, the... The, I, the, area, the area I lived, the Dundee area, the, the representative in the unicameral was uh, Peter Hoagland. Yeah, Peter, Rene, yeah, Peter, Peter, Peter ran yeah. for Congress. Uh -huh. uh, he was a wonderful guy. Yeah. And, uh, and so I ran for his seat. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how I got involved uh, in, in that. And, and I served two terms and with Ernie. And, uh, and er, I'll tell you, I, Ernie, I'm very, very, very proud to have Ernie helping me on my my some of this little race I'm doing now for mayor okay I mean Ernie and I've been together uh on the in the unicameral uh for well it's my 15th year of course Ernie is on his 39th year right so nobody's ever going to come close to him as far as longevity but I'm second right I'm second to Ernie so um well we worked on a number of issues and I and I worked on a number of issues uh in those days uh that uh were very very interesting a lot of juvenile issues we did mm -hmm. we did a a bill uh, on, on illegal firearms, we we had a bill that said, you know, if you before you bought a handgun, you had to have a, a permit mm -hmm. and and you have to have a background check. And and Senator Chambers was a big supporter of that, and it's still the law today. I'm sure it helps a little bit. There's a lot right. more we could do, but right, right. So um, then after that, uh, that's when the housing authority came up. So okay. uh, I, I got out of the legislature. I ran for Congress, but I didn't win, and, and so I, but I wanted to stay in public life. So, right. uh, so I, uh, <coughs> I I decided to uh, to get involved in the housing authority, and I was on the board of that. And then and then uh, for 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 almost four years, three and a half years, I, be, I I left the board and then came back and as executive director. And that's when we did um, Ernie Chambers Court. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's still standing there right now. It's beautiful. beautiful yeah. Facility. That was a that building that was one of the first luxury apartments in Omaha. It was developed in the 1890s, I think, or maybe right after the turn of the century, mm -hmm. and it was it was very fancy. And uh, it was designed by the architect who did the uh, Trans Mississippi Exposition at Donna Coons Park. Man. So there's history there. So we we did that building and it had a number of units and it was really in bad shape, mm -hmm. and uh, it, then we completed that in October of two thousand. Well, in the summer of two thousand and six, decided to name it after Ernie, mm -hmm. and uh, he's very proud of it. And I we had the groundbreaking and he came with his dog mm -hmm. and his family members. Right. It was great. Heck yeah! Now, um, what has been your greatest accomplishment. I mean, I mean, you're still young. You're still young. Thank I mean, you. I mean, you still got you still got time to go. But what, but so far, in in your political career, what 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 has gave gave you the greatest satisfaction? Uh, are there maybe two things that that I feel most proud of? Uh, maybe three, but that <coughs> definitely two. One is the. Um, is the housing we did we we did uh when i came in as executive director we were uh, under because where you grew up a hilltop mm -hmm. when those when those uh, uh units were demolished mm -hmm. it, it, we were under a court order in the city to replace them with public housing so right so uh uh when i came on board with about three and a half for about three years and in, in uh as executive director we still had 300 units to go so I suppose my greatest accomplishment or satisfaction, I, someone else will have to judge whether it was an accomplishment, mm -hmm. but the greatest satisfaction I had was when we, on the very last day that we were permitted, that we had to complete these 300 houses, mm -hmm. um, we got it done. We, and the judge, at that time Judge Strom, signed the order. It was 2006. In fact, I remember mm -hmm. it was October 1st, 2006. Mm -hmm. Judge Strom signed the order saying you've completed your, the project, you've got these 300 units on uh, online, including the units in Ernie Chambers Court, which mm -hmm. was part of that project. Right. And, and that was number one. Maybe number two would be the bill we passed last year in the legislature and then overrode uh, the governor uh, pre providing prenatal care for all babies. Right. Uh, I, 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 can't, I, I can't recall any, anything 
that I mean I think about that all the time yet today I, mm -hmm. I, because what had happened was a number of immigrant moms had had come here and and many of them don't have didn't have status but their right. babies would be U.S. citizens right so uh, we passed a bill to make sure that they had the kind of prenatal care that was necessary so they had healthy babies that that was it and then maybe the third thing was when we did the Quest Center I, I we I've been what was involved in that. Uh, from the very beginning, I was asked to be involved, and mm -hmm. uh, that was a great project to, to come back to the riverfront. And, and, the, and one thing that was interesting about that was one of the ideas we had with the Quest Center, and it started to happen with No Doe and going over the north of Cumming, was that when 16th Street was sort of blocked off by the hotel, right. we started to look at 10th Street as sort of the new bridge kind of between north and south omaha along 10th street and uh into the no doe area and then off uh, up to 16th street mm -hmm. and um it hasn't we need a lot more work to do that mm -hmm. to make that happen but that that was great to get well, back to the river yeah what i got me the riverfront now to where it used to be growing up as a boy far as they're seeing the uh you know the metal plants and stuff like that the asarco the smelting yeah. plant mm -hmm. was there mm -hmm. And to now where we're saying, you know, beautiful uh, um, commerce. Yeah, and I think more to come, don't you? I mean, I, I just think it's just the beginning. 25 years from now, it'll be it'll be another. It, 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 there was some plan in the paper today about it looks like almost a whole new city oh, really? developing north of, uh, north of uh, well, east of downtown, north of downtown. So it's exciting, very exciting. Now, why do you want to be mayor? I think it's in a bit of my obligation because I, I, I'm term limited in the legislature, right. like Ernie was a couple of years ago. Uh, he's back, of course, as we know. But uh, I, I want to continue to do public service. I just mm -hmm. can't imagine my life not being involved in public service. Right. And uh, I've had experience in working on city projects with the Quest Center and the housing. And, and then in the legislature, some of the big policy issues like criminal justice, juvenile justice, taxes, all mm -hmm. uh, economic issues. Um, I, I want to be able to take that experience uh, and apply it to Omaha more right. directly. Right. And, uh, you know, like I said, um, it's not too many people that have the legislative, uh, especially on state level experience that, that you have, as well as uh, Senator Chambers. Um, you know, I, I want you as the the governor, you know what <laughs> I mean? I mean, I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, mayor's, mayor's cool. Yeah. Uh, and you're running for mayor, but, you know, I was just thinking, I said, dang, who has the most experience on the state level um, um, than, than, than you two? I think, I, think, uh, I think it would be great for Omaha if we had a, had a governor from Omaha. Uh, it, we're 40 percent of the state's population right in the city here. Uh, I, I think, and so much, you've, you've really hit the, hit, hit the point, and that is that so much of what we do here. Uh, in Omaha, it does rely on policies that are developed in Lincoln, mm -hmm. and and uh, my good friend Chris Beitler, who's mayor of Lincoln, mm -hmm. was a colleague of of mine for a number of years, and I think, and he tells me that it's there's a big benefit for him to have that knowledge of what goes on in the legislature. But governor is, you know, it's a, and I have a good friend Steve Lathrop, uh, who is from Omaha. Mm -hmm. Steve's, I'm sure, will run. I know he's going to run for governor, uh, and uh, he'll be a good. A good candidate and there may be others but mm -hmm. so yeah it's it yeah it, but i think mayor i i really have spent many many 30 years of my life working on omaha projects and, right right uh, i just think that i i've never w wanted to do anything more right now than to, to to be mayor of omaha so what when you win what yeah. would you do day one i i want to my biggest passion is uh, the violence in North Omaha and in South Omaha, uh, but it's been it's been elevated here in North Omaha lately compared to South Omaha for whatever reason. I mean, I, mm -hmm. there are lots of reasons. But I when I when I did the housing authority job, I I used to go have to go to uh, the scenes of many of the shootings because a lot of not a lot but many of the incidents occurred around or on housing authority property or near mm -hmm. housing authority property. So I. I that had a profound impression on me. And what I learned there was that a couple things. One is that it's, it's essential to have positive relationships with the police department. So right. And that means community relationships. And one of the things that I think has happened in Omaha, uh, and I, I talk to 
officers and, and community people a lot on this issue, and I certainly did. When I was at OHA, uh, Tom Warren was police chief, mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time with Tom, and uh, he was very uh, engaged with us in trying to stop shootings. What I learned was that most, if not, not all, but a lot of the shootings are retaliatory in some way. Someone is mad at somebody else, and there's right. there's retaliation going on. And I think that that's very difficult to, to, to know when that's going to happen. In the last couple of years, we've lost more than 100, in, uh, including Tom Warren and others, police officers who have retired from the force right. because of the pension issue, you know, the pension benefits that they receive. That is a real loss to us. So it seems to me we have to dig in there and, and address that issue and encourage, incent, whatever the word is, officers to stay on the job so that we don't have, uh, we, so we have a balance between younger rookies and but more seasoned officers right, right. who know the neighborhood. Right, who live in the neighborhood, <laughs> yeah, preferably. It, yeah, and, and, you know, yeah. especially in North Omaha, and um, you know, the history with, uh, with police and 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 our, our relationship. Um, what what can be done to 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 create a more positive relationship? I, I think I think it's 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 blocking and tackling. I think the mayor. That's my, my number one priority is, is, is stopping the violence, mm -hmm. the shootings. That is my I've, – I have lived with it too long. For all the wealth Omaha has, it's just unacceptable. We just cannot have this anymore. And, they, and, and there are many ways to address it. Obviously, housing is a big factor. Right. Uh, and, and, but, but when it comes to the violence itself um, – you, and jobs is obviously an issue, an issue and, and, and I, but when it comes to the, the, the triaging the violence, literally st helping to stop it from happening, mm -hmm. it's going to take a very, very hands-on uh, involvement by me, the mayor, right. with the police officers. I, I think I have to be a partner with the police and the community leaders on the ground when these things happen. Right. I mean, I don't think you can go up in the office in, in – down at City Hall and, and, and direct people to do things. I think you have to be like, I, I always think of George Patton, you know, uh -huh. in World War II. Right. He, he was, he, he had those, that, the, those, that pearl handled revolver and he was out on the, he was doing the invasions and he, I think, I think you have to have a mayor that's willing to get out there on the street with the officers, with community leaders, and really discovering what the problem is. We did, we did, I was involved in, 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 a, in a project at UNMC at, in the emergency room, uh, helped raise some money to, for a hospital intervention program, because a lot of what was I saw when I was at OHA was that uh, you'd have, you know, family was, uh, was traumatized by a shooting, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they'd go to the emergency room and, 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 there was this anger, and there should be anger, and right. and, and 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 trauma and frustration, and and so uh, we, uh, Ben Gray has been involved in that a little bit. Is is to go to the emergency room, and to to talk to the families and and try to encourage them not to retaliate. Right. And so it's it. There's a strategy for every problem, but it it's got to be a day to day deal. Right. Now. Um. Um. I know one of the things that that's not used a lot is mediation. Is it possible that we can even set up mediation where, where community folk can can uh, say, I need to call someone, I'm having this problem with this person, have someone mediate before it, it actually snowballs? That, that's, that's exactly what we have to do. I mean, you've hit it. I think if there was any strategy that that will work, you have nailed it. Right. It's, it's mediation. And I was impressed in Chicago when I visited the ceasefire program there mm -hmm. where uh, – and I've talked to Ernie a lot about that, and and uh, he's not. Conv we we talk back and forth about you know what is the right strategy, and uh, but the ceasefire programs where uh, there is mediation in effect mm -hmm. between even between two rival uh, right. people, and it's not always gangs. It could be splinter groups or just groups of kids. Mm -hmm. Is is and I think there's a misconception, and you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's a misconception that people think well it's just a couple gangs. 
it's like West Side Story. No, it's not like West Side Story. Right, it's right. They, there. There are lots of kids that, for one reason or another, are thrust into a situation where you know they they resort to violence, and it's not just gangs. Though gangs are a problem, but mm-hmm. but so I think mediation between uh, leaders of groups, between uh, the police and community leaders. Uh, I think that community policing to me as much as humanly possible means that officers live in or as close to the area they're policing as possible. Right, right. I, I think when I was growing up, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, that was the 50s. Right. But I think we, some of those ideas are still are still good, and that mm-hmm. is – Police ought to live. The police officers ought to be part of the neighborhoods they're policing, right. and that doesn't, and not just based on, on on race and color, but 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 where you live. Yeah. And uh, so I think all that mediation, the mediation model, bringing people together, and it, you're not forcing a decision on. What's cool about mediation mm-hmm. is that you're asking two or three parties or whomever it is engaged in conflict to come up with their own solution. Right. Instead of imposing a solution on them. Right, right. They will do it if you give them the ability to do it. Well, you know, I think that's the, that's the missing link. My, back, my background is uh, uh, doing therapy, and and I right. know for sure if, if sometimes we sit people down and, and they can talk, and um, that's when they can compromise. Yeah. Um, they have to be willing to talk. But I think most people, you know, the whole ceasefire model, which is in every city has a different model for ceasefire. And ceasefire essentially means what you're talking about, which is finding, you know, finding ways to stop the violence on the street before it happens. Not there. There are there are prevention and intervention programs that are broader in scope mm-hmm. and take more time to develop. Mm-hmm. And those are all good. Mm-hmm like changing the juvenile justice system so you don't have so many African-Americans incarcerated. Right. That is a mistake. It's killing us. And, I, and that's what we're working on in Lincoln with Ch- Senator Chambers right now. But aside from that, that's a longer-term strategy. Right. But right now, on the street, we gotta, We don't want the, the next shooting to occur. Right. And the only way to do that is to stop before it happens. Right. Um what you debate now? I know this this your last this, is yeah. this your last year in the unicameral? I'm next year and if should I be fortunate enough to be mayor then this will be my last few months really. Last few months. After all these years and if if should I should I not be fortunate enough to win I'm very confident we can win but it depends on the voters then I just have one more year after right. that. Cool, cool. Well, um um and I'll miss it. What? <laughs> By the way. Yeah, yeah. What's what's one thing that um, people don't know about Brad Ashford that you would love to let people know about you. Um, I grew up uh, in a family that were they we were in business, and uh, uh, I grew up at Augustana Lutheran Church, which was yeah, yeah, yeah. over on Thirty Eighth and Lafayette. And I, when I was a teenager, the the uh, setting for Time for Burning, that movie that Ernie, uh, that documentary that Ernie was in, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. and it talked about trying to integrate a, uh, a North Omaha. Uh, August Ann's Lutheran Church, mm-hmm. uh, trying to integrate the that church with a, uh, a Lutheran church in North Omaha. When I was in high school, uh, there was uh, an effort to do that uh, by the pastor of our church, uh, Pastor Youngdahl, actually, whose father had been governor of Minnesota, believe okay. it or not, and, and the North Omaha church. And we were trying to integrate the church with the kids, mm-hmm. Sunday school. Right. And uh, the church was – our church was – and maybe the the other church in North Omaha too, but certainly the church that I was in in Augustana was divided. Well, this isn't such a good idea. We Some group in the church said that. And, I, and my grandfather and my mother, uh, the good old Swedes, you know, they said, no, we're going to integrate this church. We're going to have these kids – uh, going to Sunday school together. Yeah. And, and in those days, today, it seems like, oh, that's nothing. Right. But in 1968, right. that was 67, that was something. And um, that had a profound impact on, on me. And I think ever since then, that plus sports, I got to play basketball in high school. And and I got to know, in fact, I played against Dwayne. I'll never forget playing against Dwayne Dillard. Uh-huh. Dwayne Diller played at Central, uh-huh. and he was very, very good. He was all state. He 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 never missed the guy. He, he, so, we were playing Central uh, my senior year, and uh, and Dwayne uh, and I I actually had a pretty good night. 
that night we lost to Central. But when I think back on it, Dwayne was kind of saying, what didn't even guard me half the time? Because <laughs> he said, I'm even just going to let you shoot. Because all, right. all he'd do is get the ball, take it down the court, and he'd score every time. I right. mean, it was just unbelievable. So I think I think sports, which which, and the, my experience at Augustana, really as as a teenager exposed me to to the benefits of of integration right of uh, and that that ra- all different races of people are so empowered by living together in peace and and really living together and i think part of that was the store mm-hmm. because we were in the clothing business i mean we who, we didn't we sold everybody, everybody. <laughs> so so <laughs> we didn't my grandfather said we don't you know, there's no there's no race barriers with us. We right. sell ties and suits, you right? Know? So uh, and shoes and whatever. So um, I think those things about my early life, and it it really has paved my life. So I I don't like discriminate. I hate it, and when I see it, it just drives me up a tree. I mean, I I there. It, what happens, I think, is that when when you have poverty and pockets of poverty and you have problems that come out of that i think people it's i don't think anymore it's so much intentional that mm-hmm. they that that it that it remained that way but it it is somehow there's kind of a default mechanism that goes through people and and they think well there's just nothing we can do about it right i just hate that 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 view and and i think there's a lot we can do about all these things breaking down barriers is is one thing creating an opportunity for for everybody in the city to do well no matter what race they are i i you know i go i go to all the high school i'd love to go to south high right because south high the principal there is kara riggs yeah and she there are 89 different dialects spoken at south high by these kids it's like going to the united nations right and i i i would invite if everybody in town ought to have a at least a half hour at South High. Oh yeah, uh, you will get culturized. Would I? Oh wow, you will get culturized. Yeah. Um, so 30, 15 years you in the camera. Um, you mentioned Augustana, and it brought a smile on my face because I used to go there in um, with Project Embrace, Project and, Embrace, and, 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 and eat in yeah. the summer times. Yeah, and that that. And so I, I grew up on Thirty Eighth in Hamilton. Oh, so Augustana, they're two blocks away yeah, from yeah, the church, yeah, or yeah, one block. Yeah, away. one block away from the church. So I used to go to the church all the time huh. for games. And then when I seen the documentary, uh, of, time for of, burning. Yep. Uh, of 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 your progressive pastor, yeah. I said, man, I said, and I, I said, that's a great guy for doing that at that particular time. Oh my goodness, I you know, and and I and I Ernie and I talk a lot about it. And there's a scene in in the uh, in the in the documentary. It's not I'm chuckling a little bit, but I, it, it's not funny. But it's it, it. I think back on it because I know Ernie so well. Is that uh, Pastor Young Dog goes to get a haircut at Ernie's barber shop, mm-hmm. and and Ernie's talking to him and and. Pastor Youngdahl says, well, we're going to get this done. We're going to get this. And, and, and Ernie said, no, you're not. It's not going to happen. Right. You can't get the, you know, he was being Ernie. He was right. saying, he was saying he's, he, what he was really doing, and we've talked about this a lot, he was throwing up a challenge. Right. He wasn't really saying you cannot do it. Right. He was saying uh, that you, uh, it's going to be really hard to do, and you have to, you have to stay with it in right. order for it to get done. And that's Ernie's style. We had a, I had a conversation with him yesterday uh, about something that was very interesting, we were we were talking about uh, some a speech that Ernie was making, and maybe it was about horse racing or something. But he was he was making some some you know I don't want to say radical statement. He was using the language that he uses oftentimes. Mm-hmm. He people look upon it as combative, right? But what he's really doing is he's trying to he, he's trying to take an issue that he cares about. I mean, poor people being. Uh, uh, manipulated by gambling, let's say. Right. So, so he then, but he needs to make the point. He needs to make it stick with people. Mm-hmm. So, so in order to do that, he has to use language which some may think is incendiary or a fire. And it is fiery. Right. Uh, but and he does it almost. We were talking yesterday. I said, Ernie, it's sort of like being at, being an abstract painter. But instead of it being a, instead of it having impressionist art, you have somebody come in like Van Gogh or Picasso, and they paint something totally wild. Right. That and 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 in order for it, they're just trying to make a point. Right. They're trying to say that you, you don't look at, at at the world only through an impressionist kind of a view. Right. You right. can you can you can you can push the envelope. And I think that's what he does. Right. And I think that's what he was doing in 1968. Right. 
you know. Oh yeah, what I doubt. I mean, that, that's that, that's my feeling. Um, um, my background's from behavioral science. Usually, uh, he gives out indicators to to challenge one to to create motion yeah. and, and movement in in, 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 in others. So uh, and to be truthful, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think he's always um, uh, one. I, uh, another Ernie story. Then we can let that let it go. But. I don't want to just uh, I don't want to embarrass Ernie by talking to him like this, but but uh, and it would be because he takes no joy in being uh, singled out. Right. right, right. But uh, but he uh, he uh, my mother uh, was dying actually of cancer in 1991. I was in the legislature mm -hmm. and um, in the spring, my mother died in November. And, and I recall and I, she would come down uh, to, to the legislature and I would recall uh, Ernie would go up and talk to her. You know, and say, "No, don't worry. We'll take care of Brad. He's going to be okay." You right. know? And uh, so there's a tender side, uh, but he doesn't like it. I, I shouldn't even say this, right? Because <laughs> he doesn't want other people to know it. But but there's a real tender side. To oh it. yeah, what I doubt. Now, what else do you see in, in regards to your vision for the city of Omaha? You know, I I, I want I want there to be I, I really want there to be a new sense of optimism about where we're going as a city. I, I, I sense that we're, uh, the last 10 years, we've done some great things. I mean, business business is is better for, for some. Mm -hmm. uh, but the second passion I have for Omaha, what, what I would want to get done right away, is I want to develop a career academy in North Omaha and South Omaha for ninth and 10th graders so that they can start to learn uh, or if they so desire, if they want to get into a, a skill that where they can start to work in their high school years and then get the ability to work at a high paying job when they graduate from high school, that I have a bill in the legislature on that. That's mm -hmm. something I desperately want to do. And I've even thought in North Omaha we could even focus on on technology, mm -hmm. where uh, the internet, uh, entrepreneurial science, things that directly are applicable to a job. At, right after high school, uh, mm -hmm. and we, the, the, what I want to get that must get done. Grand Island has one of these things. Mm. Uh, Lincoln is developing a, a career academy for two thousand students and or twelve hundred students in Lincoln. Okay. What I foresee here is is <clears throat> fifteen hundred to two thousand students in North Omaha, and then the same number in South Omaha. One connected to the Metro campus at right. Fort Omaha, the other connected to the Metro cam or Metro South Omaha. I we cannot have youth unemployment the way it is here, and 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 I know that if we provide the uh, the pathway for kids, and now they still may go to college, right? But but at the same time, they can be working at a high, relatively high paying job. I mean, UP talks all the time about needing you know welders and that sort of thing, and mm -hmm. being a welder today is not like being a welder. 25 years ago, 30 years ago, it's a very high skilled job. Mm -hmm. So, and it pays well. So, we need if we can develop courses so high school and in the summer these kids then would be working with an employer, we'd match them with an employer like a UP or whomever it is, Valmont, and 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 so these these kids would be working in the summer and making good money. I that has to happen. Yeah. That has to happen. Well, you know, you know, you know, to me we took a uh, in 1984 uh, when they closed technical high school, that that to me that 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 was right. it, that's it was we had it. We, 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 we it had was that, there. <laughs> it was yeah. in the community. Yeah, we, we, we had it. Now now we we we, yeah. we, we turned it. We destroyed it. Now we got to bring it back. We got to bring it back. And there are little bits of it. And I and there are little pieces of a career academy. But today, but I but I really think we need the, this uh, collaboration with Metro, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and and quite frankly, if we build this with Metro, and, and we ha they have the capacity at Metro right now mm -hmm. to do it. So this the the instructors over there. We can, and what our our bill calls for is is tuition assistance for kids. So, if they qualify, they would go over to Metro mm -hmm. in tenth summer after their tenth grade year. They would start their pick a discipline, you know, whether it's technology or welding or automotive, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They pick that that discipline, and and their tuition would be paid by the state. And Metro, because Metro already has many of these programs for older kids. They can do it at uh, for twelve, fifteen hundred dollars tuition, right? And and those kids will have their tuition paid, and they'll get their high school diploma and their certificate. I, I think it would be transformational. 
Oh, yeah, and, without a doubt. And there shouldn't be any stigma attached because they can still go to college. It's just that they're going to be able to pay their own way or pay a big part of it. And and uh, and still, yeah, I just I just think that has to be done. And I think it's the mayor's mayor's role. The third, I guess, lastly, what I would say is, I view the mayor's role as pretty broad. Mm-hmm. Uh, the mayor has specific responsibilities of running the city government, but. Uh, but I think that ha- we have to reach out. The, 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 when we had that one sc- – when I got back in the legislature, and Ernie was still there in 87 – not 2007, the, um, we were having the, the one city, one school controversy. Mm-hmm. Well, that went on for four years, and, and uh, it took up a lot of money and time in the legislature, attorney fees. That's the job of the mayor, that it seems to me, to get to say – even though the the schools are not under the jurisdiction of the mayor, the mayor to keep peace. Right. That's a great mediation opportunity right there. <coughs> right, I doubt because uh, all that money can be used for, for uh, books and stuff right. like that. Yeah, for, not uh, lawyers. I mean, yeah, yeah, and other resources. Um, are you tired? Sometimes, um, but I'm I, I'm pretty invigorated actually. Right. I mean, right. I think I, so many of the issues I work with every day uh, in the legislature carry over to Omaha. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'm working. Yesterday, we worked all day on juvenile justice to try to to to, to redirect uh, young juveniles out of uh, incarceration and, right. and and I, I and get them help early. And those are easy words to say, but that has to be done. And uh, we have a major reform bill in, in place that will pass this year, I predict, and it will it will get kids out of detention and get them help and, and, and get them back to their homes, mm-hmm. family therapy, mental, mental health, uh, screening, all that kind of stuff. And, um, so when I get to do that and then I know it applies to, yeah, I'm a little tired, but it's, but I don't, I'm invigorated though. Right. Right. Well, and, and the reason why I say tired, because I know how a campaign is campaign is 24 seven. Right. So. There's not a lot of <clears throat> free time. Um, uh, so you exercise, you run. I run it. Try to run every day and swim. You swim too. And bike. I, I want to do. A, I, I'd like to do that mini triathlon. Oh, you heard him bring one, aren't they? They're having one over at uh, Lake Sorensky, I think. And, yeah. And uh, it's a mini one. I, I I have run. I ran some marathons when I was in my mid forties. Okay. And uh, I like jogging. I, I w- it would be fun to. And I bet my uh, swimming is not my strong point, so I'm, I'm practicing swimming. <laughs> right. And um, bicycling, I like to do uh, cycling, but uh, um, yeah, I, I exercise. I've been doing it for since college, at college and and uh, it's my saving grace, really. Right, right. One other question: How can we, we? Like you said, we have the. Uh, I think we got the the most richest people by capita per capita, but we have the one of the poorest community also. How can we bring? It those 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 people that over here that have ideals on how to to, to yeah. bring us up besides certain groups, right? Um, just just a, uh, the grandmother across the street just go knock on her door and say, "Well, what, what do you think we need done?" Yeah, and, and hook them up with uh, you know people that that can make those 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 changes by investing in in, in this part of the city. I, I think I here's what I think the I think one of the and it really gets the role of the mayor. The mayor is is just is one amongst. In my the way I view the office is one person amongst many who do hopefully good work for the city. It, mm-hmm. Not any better or worse than anybody else. We're all in it together. Right. So the, my role is, is to do just as, as you say is to it is the it is beyond comprehension that we are the wealthiest city per capita in the country and have the best business climate in the country for most Omahans, mm-hmm. many Omahans. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, we seventy percent of our kids at OPS are in free and reduced lunch. Mm-hmm. So there is a disconnect that has got to be bridged. And it, and it seems to me that get back to mediation again. Mm-hmm. One of the mediation, yep. one of the mediation, and I've been trained mediator, and we set up mediation centers in the legislature across the country, across the state. I'm totally sold on it. Mm-hmm. But one of the skills that you have is listening. I think mm-hmm. is to go out and say, what is it? 
What are your dreams and if you live here on 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 uh, on Military Avenue, what what are your dreams and aspirations not only for you but your children? And then you try to connect that with the wealth that's here. Mm-hmm. It's got to it's got to be bottoms up. It can't right. be top down. I think we get a little bit because everyone there is a lot of wealth and mm-hmm. people want to help so desperately right. that and a lot of good things are happening with early childhood education. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Um, with truancy, we 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 worked on the truancy initiative in the legislature three years ago i mean we're turning around truancy kids are getting back into school and they're graduating so there Mm -hmm. are things government can do because it's within their jurisdiction but 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 the private sector we need to match the private sector up to the real visions and dreams of of, of people who happen to be in for whatever reason living in poverty Mm -hmm. it's got to be more bottoms up but the mayor's job it seems to me is to make that connection Mm -hmm. is to Make it and say what is it that you need, and 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 then take and then go out to the uh, nonprofit community or uh, the donor community, mm-hmm. ph- philanthropic community that have made a lot of money for a lot of reasons, but certainly the Warren Buffett uh, people who have given so much to the community, and but everybody gives. Mm-hmm. And here's the other thing that I think there's a misconception of. What I found is that uh, people have money to give, and they give it generously. But everybody gives something. It, 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 this is the most giving town I ever saw. It, if you have little money, you, you give your time. Uh, at, at the housing authority, a lot of retired women who uh, had been teachers mm-hmm. had they would they would work with the kids on the at the, at the housing authority, like Hilltop and right. and, and Logan Fontenelle. With those kids, I mean, it's not just money anyway. It's it's giving of your time, and right. I. But I think it has to be more bottoms up, right. and 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 the mayor has to make those make those connectors. Right, because you know they, they they got the big brothers and big sisters for the kids. Sometimes you need, uh, um, like I said, those that that have the business knowledge or knowledge to hook up with with aspiring entrepreneurs. That's what we and, need, and, and, and mentor, mentor, actually develop those relationships and mentor them because those are the ones that that help the children get out of poverty. You know, it's interesting. I was I when I wanted I was at a roundtable discussion with at South, and there's a young girl from uh, 16 from Somalia, I believe, mm-hmm. and and she and I asked her, "What are your what are your hopes and dreams?" Well, um, she wants to be a clothing designer. Mm-hmm. That's what she wants to be, right. and so and and I said, well, really, what kind of clothes do you want to design? And she she showed me what she was doing, right. and and it, they're wonderful thing. I mean, that if to take put that young woman, that young girl, uh, into contact with with some sort of uh, micro business funding mm-hmm. to allow that girl to 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 market her designs. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how that's how miracles happen, right? I think. Right. Right. <laughs> now, now, um, I was asked every, everyone that's going to take the office of mayor: uh, Are you? Do you want to be a regular mayor or a mayor that that are that's written in the history books? I want Before. I want to be the George Norris of mayors. George Norris was the the guy who started the unicameral legislature on the theory. Like you're talking about is that if people get together uh, with in a nonpartisan way, with hopefully without being overly influenced by special interests, great things can happen. Right. And the reason, and thank you for asking that question, because it'll be up to the people to judge whether I uh, go to the history books or not. But the reason I've decided to be an independent is people say, well, why, why do you want to be an independent? Why don't you be a Republican or Democrat? And George Norris in the 1930s said, I want, I'm going to be an independent. He was in the United States Senate. He was an independent member of the Senate and was an ally. He had been a Republican mm-hmm. and then became an independent and became an ally of George or of, uh, of FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Mm-hmm. He is sort of my hero in a way, and as, as was Bob, as is Bob Kerry and, and Mike Fahey, who's, who's been a close friend, but, mm-hmm. but the, um, as mayor, but I think I think that the um, the idea of being independent is that you you're thinking independently, not that you're a compromiser. Right. You're thinking independently. That's what independent means to me. So, any solution it could come from a Martian, someone right. from Mars. Right. If it's worth if it's worth work working on, then it's worth looking at. Right. And I think that's hopefully that's what defines my campaign is being different. 
um, they're all good can I have you know I know everybody's running for mayor they're all fine people that that mm-hmm. isn't the that's not why I'm running. I'm not running against anybody. I'm trying to. St- I'm trying to say the culture can change. Okay, cool. What else? Uh, before we get out here, what else do you want to say? I know you'd be at home watching the uh, 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 cartoons or watching Sports Center or watching newscasts. I would have said that, or did she should have said that, or if I or if you're in the sour, do you sing? What What, what else do, do does Brad does that that people don't know or or that you want to let the community know? Uh, before um, we get out of here. Well, thank you. I first of all, I care deeply. I care deeply, deeply, deeply about this city. We've been here way too long to not. And and so I I think I I wake up in the middle of the night, and I'm sure many of your listeners and, and viewers do too. Wake up in the middle of the night, like most night, a lot of nights, with with some new idea, and uh, it drives me stark raving mad because I need to sleep, you know. And <laughs> and uh, but but it it. It, 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 what what drives me, I think, is 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 being willing uh, to get out there and and send new ideas out on the street. And I know I, I, people say to me, uh, "Well, Brad, you 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 know you go this way, that I, I in that way, or whatever." I I really don't. What I what I'm willing to do, and it can be risky, in a way politically, is to is to just put ideas out there because you know even if they may seem well, this is too difficult, or it's, you know, it, it, their ideas to me are what drive action and mm-hmm. solutions, and I, I'm willing to throw them out there. Um, so I guess what, so in, in conclusion, that's what you get with me. I, I'm not I'm not afraid to, to try new things. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not afraid to listen to people that disagree with me. Uh, I'm not afraid to be told that I'm all wet and, and, and nuts. I don't care what people say as long as at least I have an opportunity to listen to them and, and, and to interact with them in a meaningful way. And I, I think that's maybe maybe what defines me. I don't know. But, I, but, it, but it, it is – I do have a great desire to find solutions to tough problems. And, and uh, sometimes that road is not that easy to get there. Well, you know, um, um, I've been watching you uh, for many years, especially um, uh, you've been involved with the state – uh, Unicamera, as well as with the Omaha Housing Authorities, both both uh, have been a part of my life for for a fact. I've known you've worked with all people from from all backgrounds, from from all parties, and uh, I know for a fact that we need leadership that that can um, shake a hand, no matter who they look like or where they come from. Absolutely, uh, this is necessary before we take our city to the next level. Um, we have I, to build a culture. You're right. I mean, I cannot think of anything. We are we're there in so many ways, mm-hmm. but we're not there yet on cultural integration. We're not there yet on accepting diversity. Yeah. We we are not quite there. We are getting there, mm-hmm. there, but we're not there. And and I maybe that's it. Maybe what is hopefully would define my years as mayor is to really juice up our efforts, if that's the right word, mm-hmm. to 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 have. Total cultural integration and remove all barriers to in, to discrimination. I, I I just it's it 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 is it is a burden on us. Right. And I and I uh, so that has to be that has to end. Right. Well, you know I um I do um, jail groups and I ask the guys all the time, what's the difference between favoritism and racism? What's the difference? Uh, there's no difference. Um, yeah. uh, both discriminate. Right. Both limits uh, one person. Both favors one or the over the other. So uh, regardless if if uh, uh, we're both black or we're both Caucasian, favoritism affects you as racism affects both of us. So um, sure, I mean we all feel it. It's just that 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 what I and I tell people. I mean I that I can't place myself as a uh, in uh, in this neighborhood exactly because because I'm I'm not African American. I'm not. You know, I, I I grew up in Dundee area. I, I have different experiences, but I'm not going to let the fact that that I've had advantages that that some of my peers my age didn't have growing up to 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 say, well, uh, that's wh- where I grew up. That's the circumstances I was in. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I and so um, again, I think you have to you have to uh, be open to learn and listen to people who have had totally different experiences than you have. <laughs> and man, that's the, that's the greatest thing. I, I, I tell everybody when I went to college, I had the opportunity to meet people from all different 
uh, background so that that de decrease uh, stress that I mean that decrease stereotypes that decrease the, the isms that are going out there and then also it, it open your eyes to a whole new world when, yep. when we uh, we have a chance to, to meet other brothers and sisters yeah, around the world exactly um, where did you go to college? I went to Midland Lutheran College. Oh, that's right. So, you told me that. So, and we say Lutheran, and, and that's why I said that Augustana, man, that Augustana uh, that has, has always, what well, Augustana fed me. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. when, when food was down low in our house, we, we can go down to Project Embrace, and um, and, yeah, and, and a, Augustana Church took care of us. So, um, the, the church it's has a great been, church. Yeah. yeah, the church has been good. So, well, we need to. Uh, we need more church. We need more pastors like like the pastors of the past. Yeah, um, we had some real good pastors of the past that 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 weren't intimidated by the status quo. They they really follow. They really follow Jesus. Um, I want to thank uh, our senator for coming out, Brad Ashford. He's running for for mayor of Omaha. He needs your vote. Uh, it's a primary April second. April second. It's very very close. Yeah, so he needs to make it in the top two, right? So he can uh, go for the final push. Yep. Um, but uh, Thank you. his record speaks for itself. His record speaks for itself. He's he's worked in his community. Um, his record for force for itself. He's ran Omaha House Authority, and uh, he's worked with our senator, Senator Chambers, on many issues that that are on the side of other people as well as senator howard you know I, I, oh gwen uh, <laughs> she she has the biggest heart of anybody i ever mm -hmm. ran across yeah so i mean she's... hey man i, I watched I, I watched the debates <laughs> on, on the camera so i know i know who the senators that that really are, are put the people before they put the lobbyists yeah uh, so um and when you understand politics um then you understand that that's all part of the process before we get out of here how can we get young people involved in politics oh that's that's the key and I, I that is the question that that is must be answered because uh, we everything we do or I do today certainly is is has to fit into a vision for my children I have a 26 year old daughter who lives in New York City and works for a, a fashion uh, business and a, a son John who is a uh, public defender and who's 32 and my 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 son Tom who's 15 is 64 and plays basketball at west side <laughs> so uh, anyway I, I mean that's what it's all about I mean they they need to understand that that does make a difference I, I if that's a great question again this election on April 2nd traditionally in these primary elections for mayor it, the voter turnout is really low mm -hmm. I please vote uh, and the young people who are listening uh, to this uh, and see, uh, viewing the show uh, on the internet, if they're on, if they're viewing it on the internet alone, that's a that's a group of people that right. that need to be involved and engaged. And and if they think their tax is too high or they think something's wrong, get in there and and and, and you know strike a blow for uh, for democracy. And I. I Anything we can do, anything we can do to get people to vote as, at a young young age as possible. I, I don't. I know I have never missed an election, mm -hmm. and uh, my first election was in 1972. Mm -hmm. uh, George McGovern was running for president against Nixon, and uh, that was I, that was my very first election. So, mm -hmm. well, you know, my mom voted for the first time in 2008. Uh, my mom was seventy nine oh. at the time. Oh. Uh, my mom come from from the the cotton fields. Uh, wow. My mom cannot read, so wow. I, read, I read. I went to the polls with her. Wow! So um, uh, she was very uh, appreciative that uh, she had a chance to vote. Um, and I know in the last few few years, before we get out here, I mean, uh, we had a lot of controversy with you know um, people going to the right polling places. Oh, we can't we can't have that and, um, and anymore. That yeah. ha and we have a bill in the legislature to make that to make sure that never happens again. And also, I'm very worried about having uh, more requirements or burdens, right. especially for re uh, retired citizens who don't may not even have a driver's license, but. They they need to be able to go and vote with a lot of without this extra documentation. I mean they they are they're registered to vote. They've signed the book. They're right. registered. Right. And and placing burdens on the most fundamental right we have, which is the right of free. Well, first of all, the right to 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 uh, practice your own religion, the right to speak, and then the right to vote. Mm -hmm. um, you you don't burden those things. And right. I, and uh, I, 
So you, you know, it, I feel more harm for 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 the elderly, those that are sick and shit, and that 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 um, pay taxes all these years, and they, they, they retirement years, and and, and we we're forgetting about them. So um, contact your your congressman, your senator, to to make sure that they, they support this bill. What what, what, what I can't what recall the number, but it it what it does. It, well, to a there's a bill that requires more identification to vote i can't remember the number but mm -hmm. that that's a bill that i that i really think is bad policy and then uh and then any and then the the vote there's another bill i wish i had all the numbers but there's so many numbers there are right. 900 <laughs> of them uh but there's another bill that that makes certain that these voter voting places will be kept open and not okay. closed by the by an election commissioner and and um that was uh for whatever reason whatever the justification it's, it's there is no excuse for that and right. and i think we've got that hopefully ironed out now. cool because it hurts everyone republican democrat oh, and, sure. and 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 independence a whole again i want to thank the senator okay. for 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 coming i know i took all his time no he, I, yeah he was hugging the mic you, you you see he didn't want to let go of the mic um but senator he got to uh uh go down to the unit camera and make some more laws okay uh, or, we appreciate or stop it. bad ones maybe how can uh Anyone get in contact uh, well, with you? They want to volunteer or they want to sign? That'd be great. Bradashford.com uh, is our website. And uh, you can uh, – we'd love to have volunteers. We, we, uh, we'd love to have locations for signs and get out the vote. We're, we're walking uh, every day. Um, various people are walking. I can't do it and be in Lincoln exactly, but I walk here when I can. And uh, so, yeah, we – Bradashford.com, please get online and volunteer and uh, – Come on board. Cool, cool. We want to thank the Senator Brad Asher again for coming to 1690 AM, the one. This interview will be on our website, so if you missed it, tell someone. They can go back and click play, and they can uh, make sure they uh, catch us at a later time. Again, I want to thank the Senator Brad Ashford. To you, oh my. I know that you are the one for the bad one.